may deliberate past today on immigration, but what they should think about is that there is a deal to be done here on immigration reform. It won't be the whole enchilada, so to speak, but we can make significant progress. And I do think that the president, in his State of the Union, laid out four pillars that, if tweaked in certain ways, could provide the foundation for the first round of immigration reform. Uh, the first and most pressing part is to make sure we legalize uh, the DACA population, the DREAMers, and provide a pathway to citizenship. And I do like that the president uh, put out, let's not just handle the seven or 800,000 that are covered, let's also cover the entire population that's eligible, and that's 1.7 or 1.8 million. Now, in return, it's very, very clear that the president's going to demand border security. And we've always supported border security. That has been one of the pillars of our immigration reform platform. In terms of what that security looks like, there is, there is debate. Uh, you know, the president clearly wants a wall, and clearly for any deal to get done that Hill will sign, uh, at least a part of a wall is going to have to be part of that. And my opinion, the $25 billion ta price tag should be drafted in a way that gives the executive maximum flexibility to uh, conduct border security as the president and his team sees fit, but then use congressional oversight to hold the administration accountable on the progress of the plan. And to me, that, that would be the best incentive for the administration to use those resources wisely. Uh, the third pillar is, is basically to reduce our, the immigration system in the United States focus on, on families and to shift it more in a skill-based uh, uh, way. Other countries like Canada have put a premium on skills. From the business community's standpoint, we're always looking for ways to get more skilled workers uh, into the country. Now, there's going to be human, humanitarian issues that would need to be addressed, so there should be some flexibility here. But that prong, there's a way to work that. Now, one important point here is we do not want to see a reduction in total legal immigration uh, numbers. That is very, very important, and we've had uh, certain members of the U.S. Senate, such as Senator Flake, that have made that clear that that's important. Uh, right now, many industries have a worker shortage. So the last thing we want to do is pull legal available labor off the board. But let's figure out a thoughtful way to transition to a more skill-based system while maintaining or even increasing the numbers of, skill, of, of those, with, uh, those with skills. One way to possibly do that would be to expand the NAFTA visa, which is part of the NAFTA agreement. Those are basically one-year visas. They're renewable. They're in uh, a number of 25 or so fields, professional fields, where certain academic and professional requirements are required. I would propose that that be expanded, that that program be expanded so that it could cover uh, other areas where there are labor needs. And, and basically one way to do that is if you've got an advanced degree, if you've got a a, a, a degree from a university or you have a, a trade certificate from, from a trade school or you have experience in a field that needs work, uh, let's expand that visa. It's worked very well and I actually think that's one of the reasons a lot of people haven't heard about it because it has uh, actually been one of the, it has been one of the very effective pillars of the North American Free Trade Agreement. The fourth part, uh, scrapping the diversity uh, visa, that was part of the Gang of Eight bill uh, that came out uh, several years ago. Uh, given that the demand to come into the United States far exceeds the supply of slots, no matter what immigration program you're talking about, I, I do believe it makes sense for the U.S. to be very deliberate in who it admits into this country. So again, the diversity visa to me is something that could be very easily changed to a more skill-based program. Uh, we, have, we still have huge needs when it comes to certain sectors of the economy, agriculture, temporary labor in our, in our growing hotel and tourism sectors. Uh, on the technology front, uh, there's a teacher uh, shortage uh, too, where you could easily have language teachers from other countries uh, to be part of uh, a revised visa system. So let's, let's meet this challenge. 
we can meet this challenge. I, I, I believe that all of the prongs that the president put out in his State of the Union with certain modifications could form the basis of an immigration plan that provides legal certainty to the dreamers. And we've got about 30,000 dreamers in the state of Arizona. They're employed in, in, in our workforce. Uh, a number are teachers, uh, actually. Uh, a number are in our university. A number have served honorably in the military. Let's get this done. And, we, and the clock is ticking. There is a March 5th deadline. Now, there are a couple of federal courts that have stayed things, but who knows how long that will last. Uh, we, have a, we have a great opportunity, and at the Arizona Chamber, we're going to work very, very hard to make sure that a deal gets done so that uh, by, by March 5th, uh, our dreamers have uh, that opportunity for a pathway to citizenship and to remain uh, productive members of our society in Arizona. And we increase uh, border security and, and move without changing the, the number of legal immigrants. Uh, we move towards a more skill-based system. Let's get to work and let's get it done. All right, Glenn Hammer, thanks for being on Facebook Live.